Well, hello and welcome. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake, and today we're going to talk about one of the cars of my parents, my mom's 1985 Honda Civic CRX SI. We'll run through what the car was in the world of Honda back then, discuss the dealership where she picked it up, and then run through a few interesting documents that I happen to still have from 1985. And as always, if you like this video and like what we're up to, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate the support, and there's a lot more of this where this Honda video came from. Now with that, let's talk about the CRX SI. So first of all, let's talk about what the CRX was. Honda had been making really big inroads with their cars in the United States market, and the Civic was one of the cars that was really leading the charge. That said, Honda didn't really have a sporty, fun two-door coupe to offer, and they fixed that with the Honda Civic CRX. So the CRX was truly just a Civic with a different body. A lot of people refer to it as a camback, but more or less it's a hatchback that is otherwise a plain Civic underneath. Now the regular CRX came out for the 1984 model year and it featured a 1.5 liter carbureted four cylinder that made 76 horsepower. And that could be mated to a manual or automatic transmission, but in either case, the focus was really twofold. It was on handling and fuel economy over everything. Now, when mom went shopping for the 1985 model year, Honda had added the SI trim to the CRX lineup. The SI trim stood for sport injected, so it was a little sportier variant compared to the regular CRX, and it was fuel injected. Now, this was a big deal. All of these cars weighed in right around 2,000 pounds, but still 76 horsepower is not a lot, no matter how you look at it. Doubly so if you add in air conditioning and say a passenger to the car. So when Honda added the SI trim for 1985, it came with this fuel injected version of what they call the D15 four cylinder. It's still a 1.5 liter, but it made 91 horsepower compared to the carbureted base model four cylinder, making only 76 and it made 93 pound-feet of torque. Now, while other CRX models were available with a three-speed automatic, every CRX SI only came with a five-speed manual transmission. So, the year was 1985, the CRX SI was new on the scene for that model year, and mom decided it was time to pick one out and have it be her own. She walked into Colby Motors in Reseda, California to take a look, and ultimately brought her car home from that dealership. Mentioning the actual dealership where this car came from would not necessarily be notable in a lot of cases. However, Colby Motors was founded by Andrew Colby, and he was the founder of the first Honda motorcycle franchise in the United States, and that was on Ventura Boulevard in Woodland Hills. Colby Motors was his car dealership, and it was one of the first 12 Honda car dealerships to be franchised in the United States in 1970. The dealership is still there on Reseda Boulevard in Reseda, California. Mom was at the dealership. She picked out her CRX SI in a very nice shade of navy blue that Honda called Baltic Blue. Every SI had the silver trim on the bottom of the car with a little red pinstripe that wrapped all the way around. Back in the 1980s, leasing wasn't really a popular way to bring a car home. Most people would still purchase the vehicle and either write a check or finance it like you do today. Leasing was emerging as a new way to drive a car. It was the same model where you finance the depreciation of the vehicle, agree to a certain lease term and number of miles per year, and then turn it in when you're all done. Now mom leased the CRX through a company called the First Leasing Corporation, which was a company that appears to have been independent from any one brand. So that's a little different from what we do today, where we lease a vehicle through a company that is attached to the manufacturer of the vehicle. Now, like I said, leasing was new back then. When you look at leasing today, we often have a two to three year lease term with 15,000 miles a year as the high end of the mileage that you would really choose when you're looking at your monthly payment and all of the other terms of the lease agreement. Mom's lease actually specified a five year lease term with 15,000 miles per year allocated. That's a 75,000 mile leased car. Now the interesting thing is payments at the time for her CRX SI 
were $189.70 per month. Now the total of all payments made would have come to $11,382, including all taxes, fees, and interest. Now before we get into the potential whereabouts of mom's actual 85 CRX SI, I wanted to share a few fun pieces of history that she gave to me after holding on to them for 35 years. She walked out of this dealership in Reseda, California 35 years ago with this new car owner's packet with a lot of fun things that are still inside. So let's take a look. Now, first up is the owner's manual to the 1985 Honda CRX. Now you'll notice it says Honda Civic CRX and it says Civic a bunch more times here for stylistic effect. I initially thought this owner's manual was given out to every buyer of a 1985 Civic and now I don't think that's the case. This owner's manual is specific to just the CRX. Yes, the CRX was just a Civic with a different body and in some cases like the SI, a different drivetrain. It was different enough with the different body that it did merit a completely different owner manual. Next up there is the 1985 guide to Honda warranties. This is an interesting one. There is a bumper to bumper warranty on this Civic CRX for 12 months or 12,000 miles and the powertrain is covered for just 24 months or 24,000 miles. Now I find this really interesting. Honda at the time in the 80s was kind of blazing a new path for automotive reliability and what we considered acceptable and normal. New car warranties, no matter the manufacturer though, were not very long. Next up, there's a couple documents related to tires. This is the owner's manual for mom's Michelin tires that came on the Civic CRX SI. Now the interesting thing here, this is a tire owner's manual. They're tires, what do you do? You check the tire pressures and you drive on them until they're worn out. There's not a lot to say. But if you'll notice, there's some space here where you can fill out whatever information is applicable to your specific vehicle. And my mom, ever the diligent note taker, sat down with the salesperson and did fill in all that information. Now, according to what mom wrote down here, her 85 CRX SI came with a 13 inch wheel and tire with a 175 millimeter tread width. That is a teeny tire. It's important to keep in mind the car weighed about 2000 pounds and made just a hair under 100 horsepower. So you truly didn't need a lot of tire. The other interesting thing is the recommended inflation pressure. The spare tire is of course listed at 60 PSI, but the recommended inflation pressures for these teeny tiny 13 inch wheels and tires is 24 PSI. That is, again, almost nothing. Modern wheels and tires are obviously much bigger, much wider, and a modern tire will require more than 24 pounds of air to ride well, get good fuel economy, wear properly, and of course stay on the beat of the wheel. Now the final interesting piece of this CRX SI documentation is that mom also saved the genuine Honda air conditioner operating instructions with its little hang tag string that was probably stuck to one of the vent controls or who knows what for her 1985 Honda air conditioning unit. And the front of this says, your new Honda air conditioning unit is designed to work as an integral part of your Civic's heating and ventilation system to provide optimum comfort under all climatic conditions. And then it goes through and talks about how to set the climate control for your Honda Civic's climate control system for optimal conditions, no matter what sort of weather you were driving in. And this is interesting because it does cover all variants of the Civic from the CRX to the hatchback and sedan and if you remember in the 80s, the Civic Wagon, which was kind of this weird wagon van sort of deal. Now, the one interesting thing that Honda points out here is that compared to other Civic models, the vent controls for the CRX were controlled by push buttons instead of a slider. So there is your interesting Honda trivia fact for their climate control systems in 1985. As far as where this 85 CRX SI is now, Unfortunately, mom was not able to keep the car for the entirety of the five-year lease term. Some things changed in her life. She and her roommate ended up driving out to the East Coast, to Virginia, which is where she ended up meeting my dad. They ended up marrying, having me. She did get rid of the CRX in favor of something a little more practical for a young child. The good thing is it looks like when mom sold the car in 1987, it was purchased by this one owner in Iowa. And while it did bounce around the state, perhaps as the owner moved, it's marked as just a two owner car through June of 2001. There is a potential that the car is still alive somewhere or at least still above ground in someone's barn or garage. There is of course also the chance that it went off to the great junkyard in the sky. 
That said, there is no accident history listed on the Carfax, so I don't think it was in a wreck. If anything, it may have just been taken for the sake of rust accumulation, or perhaps something wore out and it was just not feasible to repair it anymore. And that is it for this episode of Cars of Our Parents, featuring my mom's 1985 Honda Civic CRX SI painted Baltic blue. It was really fun to go through this car and its history with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got a story of a car that was important to you or your family throughout your lifetime, we'd love to hear it and share it with our followers, whether that's in video format or written word. I'll share the link to our submission form in the description below, so please take a look, click that link, and fill it out if you've got something to share with us and our followers. And as always, thanks so much for coming along. If you like what we're up to, please take a second and subscribe right here on YouTube. Give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you again soon for the next one.